Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Clocked In with the Press, hosted at Altman Studios in Brentwood, California. In this podcast, we highlight news stories, individuals, and organizations that deserve your attention. For full news stories and to stay updated on the latest Contra Costa County happenings, you can visit our website and Facebook at thepress.net or our Twitter and Instagram at Press Clocked In. I'm your host, Melissa Van Ruten, along with Caitlin Gleason, Clocking In. So the first news story that we have is that search efforts to locate missing Oakley resident Alexis Gabe will be temporarily discontinued, according to an April 3rd statement from Gabe's family. But the family also said it is planning fundraisers to fund a reward for information leading to her return. Suspension of search efforts, according to the statement, was motivated both by safety concerns, such as the onset of rattlesnake season, as well as concerns that continued search efforts would not produce any information that would assist or move the case forward. Although search efforts have been halted, Gabe's family made it clear that they are not abandoning efforts to locate the 25-year-old who has been missing since January 26th. Search efforts had been assisted by the nonprofit Class Kids Foundation since late February. The nonprofit assists with missing person cases nationwide through a network of volunteers who organize searches while also providing training to other search and rescue volunteers. The statement concludes by asking for help from the community in attending meetings as a show of support to keep Gabe's case in the public consciousness. Really, it's only a temporary suspension. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, they're still looking for clues. They're still looking for answers. I, I did see in the Facebook group that they have. They were looking for people with with boats to kind of look along the delta. I know that some of the little islands, and I think they they mm-hmm. mentioned that the little islands out there, there there's some abandoned buildings that maybe she's being held there, but they're just still really hoping for for answers one way or the other. Yeah, this is not necessarily a suspension of search efforts as much as it is a kind of strategy change in the method of searching, I think is kind of a better way to put it. Yes. I do know that it's still obviously an active case. They're still looking into it and hopefully they'll have more information for us soon as well. Mm -hmm. The Byron Teachers Association, or BTA, voted Monday to authorize a strike if a contract settlement is not reached with the Byron Union School District. Quote, we do not have a date for a strike, said BTA President Carrie Hollister. We only took a vote to authorize a strike. We hope it doesn't come to that. End quote. The vote was 98.5% in favor of the strike authorization, with one teacher voting against. Negotiations between the district and teachers have been ongoing, with BTA requesting a 5.07% salary increase and a 3% off salary, which also means one-time, compensation on February 2nd of this year. On February 11th, BTA rejected the district's, quote, best and final offer in hopes of still obtaining its goal of a higher percentage raise, calling it a cost of living or COLA adjustment. This brought negotiations to an impasse and an outside mediator was then brought in. Byron teachers maintain they have not been given an adequate raise in some time, though they did receive a 1.5% salary increase for the 2019-20 school year and a 2% increase for the 2020-21 school year, despite district funding remaining steady. With the failure of the mediation phase, negotiations are now moving into a fact-finding phase, and a hearing was held Wednesday, April 13th. A report will be generated after the hearing for both sides to consider. BUSD Superintendent Dr. Reyes Ghana said discussions have been pleasant and professional, and he and his team look forward to a resolution soon. He did say declining enrollment has played a significant role in limiting what the district can offer. However, Hollister did note that BUSD teachers are the lowest paid of the nearest 20 school districts. The district is also one of the smallest. Ghana said declining enrollment projections for the next four years and increased costs over the past two years have translated to less revenue that does not allow for an increased salary schedule of the size BTA is asking. Though the district budget may appear capable of handling an increased schedule, Ghana said much of that is one-time money from the state the district cannot depend on continually. This story is kind of interesting, I think, because I can understand the perspectives from both sides. Because from the perspective of the teachers, the pandemic really has done a number on a lot of people, teachers included. And cost of living has gone up. Inflation has gone up. Property prices have gone up. I feel like we talk about property prices every single news episode at this point. But, you know, I really understand that they do 
need to see that raise because they need to be able to continue to live in this area in order to teach there. But at the same time, I understand the perspective of the Byron School District because they don't have too much funding and they don't get that consistent increase in funding. That, like Ghana said, they only get that one-time funding and that's not going to be able to sustain it. So it's definitely a very complicated situation. For sure. And it'll be interesting to see what the the fact-finding report looks like when that comes out. This is, you know, it's a little personal. I went out to, to cover the protest they had yesterday morning at Excelsior Middle School. My mom was a teacher my entire life. My father-in-law was a teacher and now uh, is a professor for early childhood education. My sister-in-law is a teacher. So, mm. you know, my dad has taught and my aunt is a teacher. So <laughs> I feel like it's very near and dear. And it was really kind of a moment for me going out there and seeing the teachers and the parents and and even some students out there protesting and, and picketing for better wages, it's what I grew up with. Mm. You know, it's, it's been a struggle for teachers, you know, for people that we depend on to educate our children and spend a good chunk of the day with our children. They're simply not paid enough, you know, mm. and that's the bottom line. And, and I actually got emotional. I, you know, I was talking to some people uh, out at the protest yesterday and I, I couldn't, like, I cried, <laughs> you know, and I don't know if it was just like it was early, so maybe it was lack of coffee, but a no, too for real, like, <laughs> it was, you know, it was good to see people coming together in support of that. And I do, you know, budgets are budgets, but mm-hmm. yeah. something's got to be done. Like something has to change. Yeah, it's it's definitely a tough situation, especially, you know, when you look at the previous salary increases that they saw were, I believe, 1.5% and 2% the yeah. next year, which means that a 5% is over double the normal salary increase precedentally for the Byron Union School District. From their perspective, at least, I can kind of see the hesitation meeting that 5% increase. But at the same time, you know, like I do agree with you, like teachers are really underpaid right now and and California cost of living is just skyrocketing right now. Everywhere, Um, not just California. Oh, everywhere, you know, but like, I don't know if I can relate to people who complain about you know, $4 per gallon gas right now. So um, no, but yeah, no. So cost of living is increasing. So obviously, and because of inflation, that percentage of increase for salaries probably does need to go up. But I can see the Byron Union School District's hesitation in doubling their normal rate of increase in terms of percentages. For sure. And, you know, and it's hard to track for the future. Everything is very volatile right now. So Mm -hmm. we, you know, I'm not a financial analyst or anything like that. But I know that in times of inflation and and all of that, it can be kind of tough to monitor how it's going to be moving forward. And, mm-hmm. and is that an increase that will need to go up even from here? Or, you know, would that be enough to cover yeah, go, so moving forward? I look forward to kind of seeing that fact checking report and For seeing sure. like what actually works out. Yeah, it's definitely a story that we'll continue following. For the next story, a man barricaded himself on the 500 block of 3rd Street in Oakley after he was being chased by bounty hunters. According to Lieutenant Roberts of Oakley Police Department, bounty hunters were at a residence looking for a suspect that was wanted. The suspect fled out of the house, was hiding in the neighborhood, started jumping on roofs to get away, came to the location that they all responded to, went into a basement, and was hiding in a basement. The unnamed suspect did show resistance to the police. Lieutenant Roberts continued to say, quote, they tried to get him out he wouldn't come out lieutenant roberts continued by saying quote they tried to get him out he wouldn't come out they sent a county police dog in after him and he hit the dog with a pipe or a stick or something in the head we pulled the dog back out and now he's barricaded into a crawl space now we are just trying to use different tactics trying to get him to come out end quote Oakley police confirmed that they used a less than lethal sponge round to take the unidentified man, described only as being in his mid-40s, safely into custody after entering the residence at about 2.15 p.m. The man, who police say was also exposed to pepper spray and suffered a dog bite during the incident, was taken to an undisclosed hospital for treatment after being taken into custody. The man, who had outstanding warrants for torture false imprisonment, domestic violence, and assault with a deadly weapon now also faces charges of resisting arrest, battery upon a police dog, and arson. Whoa. That's a lot. (laughs) Straight out of a movie, actually. (laughs) I mean, it was pretty wacky, so I went out to this. While I was on scene, he was still barricaded into the the crawl space. He had Mm. actually attempted to light the house he was in on fire. From the basement. From the basement, correct. The fire was extinguished quickly, 
but the Oakley Police Department still had the task of removing him from the house. The dog is expected to be okay. Mm. Uh, he was going to get checked out, but they did. They used the sponge rounds and um, some pepper spray, and I guess the suspect did suffer a possible dog bite, according to Lieutenant Roberts. So they did. It took him about an hour and a half or so to get him out of the, the home. It was not his home. However, I guess he also, while he was barricaded down there, he broke a sewer pipe and it was just literally a mess. Yeah, it was definitely confirmed that he was using a pipe. Yes. Um, and that was the weapon that he used against the police dog. I didn't know bounty hunters were allowed in California. I've had a lot of firsts on scene this month. And so this was definitely my first scene that dealt with bounty hunters. So that was, it, it was interesting to show up. I mean, there were... There were at least three that I saw. I don't know how many in total. This person did seem to have a very rough history in terms of the different crimes that he's committed and problems. So I'm really glad that they were able to take him into custody and issue 100%. And I mean, definitely not having his best day. But here's some good news out of Oakley. The city of Oakley will relaunch its concert series in May in conjunction with its Friday Night Bites food truck roundup events. The music series will feature local bands and food trucks on the first Friday of May, June, August, September, and October. The food trucks and the live music will be on site from 5 to 9 p.m. at Civic Center Plaza, 3231 Main Street in Oakley. The announced band schedule is May 6th, the 925 Band, June 3rd is Jake Gill, August 5th is the Project 4 Band, September 2nd is Maya Latin Roots, October 7th is Cut Loose. Guests are invited to bring lawn chairs and blankets to enjoy their meal and concert in the park, but no outside alcohol is permitted. For more information about the concert series, you can visit the City of Oakley website. You can also visit the link that we're going to be putting in the description of the episode, so this way you can go straight to the page. And Brentwood is also having the, they're bringing back Yeah, they're bringing out concert in the park during summer, which is going to be fun. Definitely a lot of options out there. I love live music and food trucks. Like, what a perfect combination. Nice Friday night. Looking for something to do with the family. Mm-hmm. It's really heartening to see things starting to, to like return. Yeah. yeah. To, you know, you'd see people. You can go out and you do stuff. It's still outside. So for, for those who are a little nervous about getting out there, it's a little safer. It should be a really great series. I'm looking forward to it. To go to our last story for today, one person died in a two-vehicle crash on State Route 4 east of Balfour Road near Brentwood early Thursday morning on April 7th, according to the California Highway Patrol. An unidentified driver of a silver Toyota Corolla died after the eastbound vehicle crossed into the westbound lane just before 6 a.m. and crashed head-on with an international truck, killing the Corolla's driver, the only occupant of the vehicle. According to the CHB, the driver of the truck, who authorities also didn't immediately identify, was uninjured in the crash. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. The CHP did not immediately identify anyone involved in the crash. The CHP also asks anyone who witnessed the crash or the events leading up to it to call the agency at 925-646-4980. Again, that's 925-646-4980. Be aware at all times. Mm. Highway 4 can get a little dicey and early mornings you think, oh, maybe there won't be that many people out. And take it from me, don't drive tired. Driving while tired is very close to driving under the influence. So Mm -hmm. if you think that you might be nodding off or in danger of nodding off, pull over, take a quick 15 minute shut eye and drive safely. So lastly... So we've started a new segment in the paper and, and on our website called Question of the Week. So far, you know, we're in our third week. We've had a couple of what I'd like to call easy or fluff questions. and I then fluff questions. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've been in downtown Brentwood. I plan to hit up streets of Brentwood. I'll go over to Oakley, you know, some different areas so I can get some different opinions. But if you see me out there with my microphone uh, talking to folks, mm-hmm. definitely feel free to come up and introduce yourself. It's a great way for us to interact with our readers, with the public, and let them know, hey, Mm -hmm. we're still a weekly newspaper, but we have a daily news site, and we have an app, 
and you know we have all these ways that that you can connect with your local news and we also do post the questions of the week on our social media so let us know what you think there is no right or wrong answer right that's the beauty of it yeah. is that diversity is what makes the world go round or if you have any ideas for questions that you want to see asked feel free to submit them to melissa at brentwoodpress.com and we'll pick you up on the next time. Mm-hmm. You can also comment it on any of our question of the week posts on Facebook or oh, Twitter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's it for today's episode of Clocked In with the Press. We appreciate you taking the time to listen in, and we look forward to speaking with you in future episodes. If you would like to read more news stories of Contra Costa County, you can do so through our website at thepress.net or through our Twitter and Instagram at Press Clocked In. You can also check out our free app, The Press, for free news on the go. Contact us with your thoughts on this episode or any other episode before it. That's all that we have for you today, and we will speak with you all next time. This is Caitlin Gleason. And Melissa Van Ruten. Clocking Clocking out. Out.